everybody, here's another episode of MMA and Coffee. Woo. The fight, the fight happened this weekend. I haven't stopped thinking about this fight. So much to talk about and talking about Ronda Rousey versus Holly Holm. Well, first I want to talk about Holly and give credit where it's due. Okay. There's a difference between knowing what to do and being able to do it. Now, if we looked at Rhonda's previous opponents, I'm sure all of them knew. I don't want her to take me down. I don't want to go on the ground. I need to avoid the arm bar. I'm sure they all knew that, but there's a difference between executing. And so, in this fight, you saw someone who was able to do what was necessary to negate Ronda's offense. And so I think the biggest thing because of that, the reason why she was able to do that is coaching. What it all boils down to is this is the first time Ronda has fought someone with great coaches. Coaches that come up with game plans. Coaches that are notorious for game plans. Greg Jackson, Winkle John, that's all they do. If you look at, and the reason I know that is based on their past, their resume. You look at fighters like GSP, John Jones, Greg Jackson always has a good game plan. Actually, uh, Zach's not here on this episode, but he told me, it's like, look, Greg Jackson came up with a game plan where Clay Guida be Anthony Pettis. So that's just the perfect example of who we're dealing with. Let's put that in perspective and context. Holly has great coaching. So, you know, they're not going to come in here not prepared. They're going to have an answer for all this stuff. After watching the fight, that stands out to me is after seeing the fight and after how one sided it was, was for me was the odds. The fact that we saw that fight and the odds were so for Ronda, it really opens your eyes on how much the UFC was bigging up and promoting Ronda, like bigger than life fighter. And this is not to say that she wasn't who they said she was, that she's not great. It's just saying that they had built her up so high that someone like Holly Holm, who was really good, we could think that she had no chance against her. So when you see the fight and then you see the odds, it just that really, to me, is one of the biggest things that stands out. How one-sided the fight was and then the odds. So you really get to see the media horse, how much they had built Ronda up. And, you know, I kind of have a problem when they do this. And I get that like people like Dana White, they're promoting the fight. They want to build up fighters. They want to have superstars. But the problem is when they do this, you're setting up the fighter to have a really big fall. You're setting them up for, like you're building them up so when they lose, they're going to have this horrible fall. And I think a really good example of this, you know, here they, they were saying, baddest woman on the planet. It reminds me of Anderson Silva versus Chris Wachman. Before that fight, they were saying, he's the greatest of all time, he's the greatest of all time. And before that fight, they weren't saying that. You know, they were saying like he's the pound for pound best, he's the middleweight champ. They're saying, but they, as soon as they started saying he was the greatest of all time, I kind of just like had this sense that they were jinxing him. Like, and then you, you know, if you hear something over and over, you start to believe it. So in the fight, it's kind of like Anderson started believing. It's like, yeah, there's everyone sitting there telling me I'm the best, I'm the greatest of all time. And you start believing it, like, yeah, I'm the greatest of all time. I can't be knocked out. You know, I can let them hit me. I can let them hit me. I'm invincible. I'm the best. I can't lose. 
So I do have a problem when a fighter gets built up. At the same time, you almost have to be like, well, the fighter needs to not believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. You need to be grounded. And the way to do that is have good people around you. But when you get success and you get really big, you start getting surrounded by people who aren't, you know, they weren't there from the beginning, that are there for different reasons. And so you're not grounded. And so, man, so much to talk about. So the internet, they had all kinds of reactions. The one thing that stood out to was there's an interview where Vonda is on Jimmy Fallon and she actually predicts everything that happened in the fight. She was saying, yeah, you know, Holly, she's gonna try to fight me on the outside, try to get me frustrated, and then try to kick me in the head, but I'm not gonna let her do that. And what's crazy is that's exactly what happened. Like, that's what happened in the fight. And so when she says, I'm not gonna let her do that, I have to start wondering like, okay, well, how are you not going to let her do that? And, you know, people were saying all kinds of different things. But in my opinion, in this fight, Rhonda got exposed. She got exposed in the sense that we found out that she is a pure offensive fighter. There's no defense. It's just pure offense. She's used to coming forward, either taking them down, punching them. She's just used to going forward, imposing her will, and the, her opponent breaking. And so she's never had to come up with a plan B because plan A always works. So uh, I seriously doubted that she trained to defend Holly Holmes attack because all she did was train her attack and so what you see in the fight is Rhonda come forward and try to impose her will and Holly had an answer for everything she had an answer for the clinch she was able to defend it Rhonda was able to take her down once she went for the arm bar Holly was able to defend the arm bar and then when Rhonda came in swinging all wild, doing the one, two, the hooks. Uh, instead of like uh, Betch, she was uh, able to move lateral, move sideways, move out of the way. Um, honestly, go back to talking about uh, how they built up Anderson Silva, grace of all time, and then they kind of did that with Ronda. I believe the fight before this fight was probably the worst fight you could have before, okay? When Anderson fought Stefan Bonner, he had his hands down, he was doing all this crazy shit, and, uh, and then he won. So after he did that, it gave him this false confidence that, okay, I just did that to Stefan Bonner, I can do it to Chris Wyman. Problem is, Wyman's not Bonner. And you can't do that. You're not. You shouldn't have your hands down. You know, it, it. It doesn't matter. Everyone's saying you're the greatest. You know, anyone can be knocked out. Anyone can lose. So, Wanda fighting Vetch before Holly gave her this false sense of her striking skills because she knocked her out. She's thinking, oh, I just knocked her out in her home country. You gotta worry about Holly Holm. I'm the best. Everyone's saying I'm the best. Everyone I fought, I've whooped, I destroyed them. So it's like this false sense of confidence. And you don't need that. You need to respect the person's offense. So once she tried everything, so once she tried to get the clinch, take her down, try the on bar or run at her swinging, once all that work didn't work, you started to see everything crumble and break down. 
it was it was like okay Holly trained to defend all this stuff now that she's defended it now she can be offensive now she can do what she's good at and that's where you started to see the difference and that's when everything changed once Holly weathered the storm and pretty much defended everything that Rhonda had it was over Rhonda didn't have anything and I've seen a lot of people talking about you know strategy she should have a different strategy and stuff and then I've seen some people say well you know she didn't have the ability and so on well yes no all that it's, it's, it's a mixture of everything so what I would say is okay maybe she was trying and she just didn't have the ability to do a different strategy but at the same time if you're trying something in the fight and it's not working you gotta stop doing it so her chasing coming straight forward and th she was throwing the same punches hook hook you know she's chin up hook hook like she's just at one point you could tell she was getting frustrated like she said she wasn't going to do she was getting frustrated because she couldn't hit her so now you know when she's getting hit she's getting mad and now she's just trying to hit her back she just wants to hit her back she, that's she just wants to get her back and she's swinging while she's leaving herself open to be countered and she went right into Holly's game plan, which is to make it uh, a striking fight. In this, um, so in the the first after the first round was over, after pretty much Holly defended all of Rhonda's attacks, and then she was able to hit her with her own attacks. What you see in the corner, it's just like, it's, it's crazy. She's in the corner, Rhonda. She's tired, and you can see it on her face. She's kind of like, what do I do? I just tried everything, and none of it worked. And uh, uh, this is the one part about the fight that just, ugh. Like, I, I hate it. I really hate it. Her corner, it's like so close. I don't know if it's as bad as BJ Penn's quarter, but it's pretty close. I mean, like the fact that I'm even debating it. To me, BJ Penn has the worst corner. His corner is a bunch of yes men. And it's interesting because Brennan Chobb even mentioned that she has yes men and in her group and her little circle but uh, like I can't even remember the fight but BJ Penn loses around sits down and his corner instead of giving him advice instead of telling him stop doing this do this instead of like telling him he's wrong they kiss his ass they're sitting there telling him oh you're the champ you're the best and uh, they just start calling the other fighter names and I'm like, this is the worst corner ever. So, <laughs> that's almost what happened. That's almost what happened in this fight. So, Rhonda loses her first round ever. Okay. She's very emotional. She's really caught up in the moment. Everything's happened really fast. You know, she goes to her corner and Edmund is just saying, Nice, uh, uh, beautiful work, champ. Beautiful work, champ. Really? The only good thing, only good thing he said was that she was getting hit by the left. But he didn't even tell her why she was getting hit by the left, what to do to stop getting hit by the left. Nothing. He told her she was doing great. When you go to the corner, you need good advice. Um, it kind of reminds me of why, like, the Diaz and, uh, like, Melendez, Jake Shields, why 
Every fight they lose a decision, they think they won. Every fight, they're like, when they're reading the decision and they find out they didn't win, they're like, what? They're all surprised. You know why they're surprised? Because every time they went in the corner, the corner's sitting there lying, saying, great job, you're winning, you're winning. When they just lost a round, it was like pretty obvious. Like, she lost the round, she didn't, you know? So for me, it's, it's, it's hard to say exactly what he should have said. I just know what he did say was bad. And what he should have said was like, look, you need to calm down. You're getting very emotional. You're not biting smart. Take a deep breath, relax, stop running after her, straight forward. You need to cut her off in the cage and just stop all together throwing these hooks. Quit trying to knock her out. You're not gonna knock her out. She can see those from a mile away. You need to keep your hands up and if you're gonna throw anything, throw a jab to get the distance, cut the distance so you can grab her. You have to take it to the ground. Take her to the ground. If you don't take her to the ground and you're sitting here swinging, she will knock you out. They didn't tell her that. Said, Beautiful work, champ. Beautiful work. Oh my goodness, I, I still can't believe that. So, then in the second round, this is what's crazy to me, is in the second round, it's like polar opposite of the first round. First round, Ron is coming out, she's running at her. This, it starts, she kind of backs up. Completely different. And with her in the corner with her mouth open, breathing really heavy, two things. She's exhausted, she's tired. She's swinging these punches that are missing, which means she's spending more energy, and she's getting hit. She's getting hit, she's getting hurt. You're getting hurt, you know, you're gonna start getting sloppy. And I don't know how hurt she was from the first round, but when you watch the second round, all she's doing is chasing, she's throwing this left hook, and she doesn't even, I know the second round's not that long, but she doesn't even get to grab Polly again. She doesn't even get to try to take her to her ground. None of that. So, it's just crazy. Another thing is, uh, people talking about strategy, game plan and stuff. Um, I think really her game plan was to, was to take her down, you know. They, they felt comfortable at this false sense of security because of the bench fight with her stand-up. You know, even in the fight, Goldberg's saying, uh, Edmund thinks she can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with her with boxing, and it's like, no, no. And that's another thing, I, 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 I don't have anything personal against Edmund, but I just think he's full of shit. When he talks, like on The Ultimate Fighter, when he was talking and stuff, I, I just think the guy's full of shit. And to me, this kind of showed like how and like how full of yourself are you? You know, saying that your fighter can stand with someone who's been doing it their whole life, and then you look at their gym. He's got like a mural. He's got like a mural of himself next to Muhammad Ali. Are you kidding me? Dude's full of himself. He should have told her, and that, I think that's another problem. He's a boxing coach. She didn't have an MMA coach in her corner to tell her, hey, you lost that round. You lost this MMA round. You know, that's another thing. The, the dude's so delusional and full of pride that he can't admit when he's wrong. You know, you know, you said you think she could stand with her. You're seeing in the first round, she can't. She don't need to. She needs to take her down and she needs to try to either Take her down and control her there on the fight, or she's going to submit her. I think another problem too is Rhonda was used to, you know, doing her plan and it working, and so she never had to come up with a plan B. She didn't have a plan B. She had one plan. When it didn't work, you saw because she didn't have an answer for Holly's offense. Holly had an answer to, for Rhonda's offense. 
and she had defenses, but Vonda didn't have any defense for Holly. She didn't know how to cut her off the cage. She had no head movement, none. Chin up, and she was walking into that left all night. And then she was swinging wild, and she was getting countered. You know, it kind of reminds me of, you know, if someone, and something, what's weird is, you know, going back to the hype, um, I admit I was kind of believing the hype, and I was basing my prediction on how the fight would go based on Holly's last two fights. But it, this is a perfect example where styles make fights, okay? Styles make fights. When Holly fought those other two people, they weren't trying to knock Holly out, and they weren't trying to get knocked out. There's a difference. So if you're fighting someone who doesn't want to exchange and doesn't want to get hit or knocked out, it's much harder to hit them and knock them out. It's like the people that fought Rampage in recent years, and they know he don't want to, he doesn't want to take me down. He just wants to throw hooks and knock me out. When you know what your opponent wants to do, then it's much easier to negate that. So Holly didn't have to worry about Ronda kicking her in the legs, head kicks, none of that. All she had to worry about was the clinch and, and the arm bar on the ground. If she could defend that, then she could destroy her in the feet because that's what she knows. That's her bread and butter. So, so much I want to talk about. I feel like I'm all over the place. I also want to bring up the fact that Rhonda's mom has came out publicly against Edmund in a video where she's basically saying, you know, that Rhonda accomplished all these things before she even went to his gym. And when she walked in, it was basically like a, a lottery ticket had came in and then how he pretty much ignored her for months before giving her any attention and her mom was saying how she thinks he's a bad person and now I'm not really into gossip and talking bad about people but I will say her mom isn't trying to get something out of her her mom has her best interests she cares about her daughter so if uh, what she has to say about Edmund, whether it's true or not, you need to understand that it's coming from a mother speaking about her daughter, and it's coming from a good place. So she obviously, you know, is concerned, and you know, that yeah, it's, I've I've seen and I've seen videos where they talked about it publicly, Rhonda and Edmund about how he didn't really decide to help her until she had a couple amateur fights where she won by herself. So it's almost like he wasn't with her until he seen that she was winning. Then he jumped on board and like started making money off her. And then there's like articles about him being bankrupt and all that stuff. So you know, like how is all this possible? How is this going on? Um, so it, it does make you wonder about what's, what in the world is going on outside of the cage. Not only that, um, Rhonda's mom wasn't at this fight either, which is pretty interesting. The fact that she wasn't there, for me, it does start to put some questions in the air about him. The fact that Rhonda's mom even said he's using her to get other fighters into his uh, camp. And you look at Travis Brown, who's one and one, and then Ellen Berger, who hasn't been doing well. Some of that I think is mental, but you really think about it. If he didn't have Rhonda, is he really that great? And so, and after this, I mean, the advice he gave in the corner is the one thing. And maybe, you know, maybe he got caught up in the moment too 
and just didn't have an answer. But that was like his job. That was like his one job to do is to be the person that's calm and be the, you know, the mind for the fighter when they're very emotional or going through this roller coaster of a fight. If you looked at Holly's corner, Greg Jackson, Winkle John, they're all calm, they're giving technical advice. You know, they're not having to build a Holly up saying, oh, you're doing good champ, but they didn't have to say any of that. They were telling her advice to help her. So, about Ronda having no defense, it kind of remind me of when Brock Lesnar fought Cain Velasquez. Brock Lesnar comes in, he bull rushes Cain, he's used to just taking people down and just beating them up, and then it's over. Well, when he fought Cain, and he's bull rushed him, and then Cain kind of defended and got back on his feet, and when Cain had the technique, head movement, not to just get overwhelmed by Brock Lesnar's size, he got exposed. I think the same thing happened in this. Once Ronda couldn't get the arm bar, once she couldn't just get Holly in the, uh, against the cage and just beat her up and manhandle her like she did Betch, she, you find out that she was beatable. Another topic I want to talk about is Dana White, his response to people criticizing her game plan and all this stuff. Everyone just thinks they're an expert when, you know, if it would have worked, we would have just been saying she's the best, but because it didn't work, we're just criticizing her. And it's like, look, no, 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 no. When Anderson Silva fought Stefan Bonner and had his hands down, I said, that's stupid. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's stupid. You know, and he, when he looked up and he won, it's like, man. He does not need to be doing that. And then when he started doing it to Wyman, he started doing it even worse. I'm like, oh no, don't do that. So don't give me that bullshit that we can't criticize someone when they're doing something wrong. You know what I mean? So her with her chin up, no head movement, running in, swinging wild, is not the way to beat Holly. That's a fact. So. And, you know, saying, oh, well, y'all would have been saying she's great. It's like, look, no, the UFC would have been the one that's saying she's great. When she beat Betch, who was saying she's the once-in-a-lifetime human being, going all crazy, was Joe Rogan, who works for the UFC. You know, they're the ones that are building them up to be bigger than life. And, you know, so, like I said, don't want to hear that. If someone's doing something wrong, it needs to be pointed out. If no one points it out, they're going to keep doing it and eventually lose, like what happened on Saturday. So, um, again, though, I, I kind of feel like, you know, Rhonda did not train to defend Holly's offense. And so, Ronda probably started training for the fight when it was announced. Whereas Holly, I guarantee, she's been preparing to fight Ronda as soon as she signed to the UFC. If not before that, because as soon as she signed up to do MMA, you know, I, I'm trying to figure out the timeline, but as soon as she started doing MMA, and if at that time Ronda was considered the best, she knew at some point she was going to fight him. So she had to be in the back of her mind thinking, you know her coaches, they're in the same weight class. You know, they want to be champion, they don't want to be second best, they want to be the best. They're going to watch and study and try to game plan ways to beat the champion so they can do it, become champion. So what you saw was someone who had probably years of preparing for that fight compared to someone who wasn't just training to fight Holly. You know, the, it kind of reminds me of Rocky Three. It's like, come on guys, have y'all not seen Rocky Three? You know, where Stallone, he, 
he gets big and rich and famous. He's got the plantation. He's got like the the talking robot for his kid. He's wearing all these fancy clothes. He's in magazines and stuff. And while he's doing that, there's somebody else. It's Mr. T. He's training. I don't even know where he's at. He's just he's in some slum training. He's ready. I mean, that's essentially what this was. You got someone doing movies, doing commercials, and the thing is, I'm not knocking that, okay? So like, the fact she was doing that, that was great for the sport, it was great for MMA, even though it was getting a little annoying, it was so much of it, you know, she's making money, you know, money that MMA fighters probably weren't making before, so she's opening doors, I get all that, but understand, that too much of anything is a bad thing and you got to find a balance and if you're not training that means someone else is training so like when Rocky in the first Rocky when he's training in the morning he's up in the morning before anyone's awake you know that's the stuff you got to do and in the sport of MMA you got to constantly be evolving because if you don't, if you keep doing the same things, uh, especially with coaches who game plan and watch the footage, they'll take your tendencies and they'll come up with a way to beat you. And, you know, the to say that I didn't want Rhonda to lose would be a lie, because I did. I wanted her to lose. I was so tired of seeing all the commercials, the fans, and uh, Joe Rogan was just like toxic. Once in a lifetime, he went bailing. And I'm like, oh. when the in that I keep going back to it. In the bench fight, it was crazy. I was like, whoa, oh! But Joe Rogan completely ruined that moment by overreacting, going so crazy. I'm like, all right, Joe, calm down. Now I can't even enjoy the uh, knockout because of it but so I did want her to lose I did think you know she was doing some things that were like like I don't care what the reasons were to justify it, her not touching the gloves and stuff all that stuff's karma it is you know you need to be respectful everyone that steps in that cage with you you know, they need to be respected. Them signing the contract, you know, because if you don't, you know, you'll say something like the way in she was calling her fake and not respectful, and then that happened, and it's like, whew, you know, and what I loved about it was that Holly, she could have easily been disrespectful and said things you know, because if Ronda would have beat Holly in that same fashion, no doubt in my mind, you know, Ronda would have been talking trash and being mean and being disrespectful. But Holly didn't do that. She checked on her. She hugged her. She made sure she was right. She was even given respect where it was due, saying, you know, Ronda opened up the doors for women's MMA, you know, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't even have the opportunity for this fight and all that stuff. I'm so glad that it was someone like that that beat it, that beat Rhonda, because it got to the point where Rhonda really needed to be humble. She needed a big slice of humble pie. She needed a reality check because so many people were filling her with, you know, building her up to be something, you know. It, it can bring out the worst in you and the, the finish, the knockout, it was devastating, like it was, it's bad, like her mouth's bloody, she's out, she's hitting her and stuff and it's like, I wanted her to lose but I don't wish that on anybody. Like, I hope she's okay. I know the people on the internet can be very mean. 
I don't, you know, wish her to be depressed or anything like that. But she did need it to lose because the ego was getting way out of hand. The fact that, you know, at some points it seemed like she thought she could just stand with her in no respect. Or if, if she did get respect, it was too late at that point. But, yeah, I mean, I don't wish that kind of loss on anyone. And I'm not big in kicking someone when they're down. You know, we love to root against someone that's like doing good or like with the undefeated thing. So like, uh, a lot of times I root against LeBron James because everyone's talking about how great he is and they're trying to compare him to Michael Jordan. And so like, I'd root against him or Tom Brady. Like, I mean, I don't want them to win. So it was kind of similar. I was rooting against her, but uh, the, the way she lost, I mean, I can't really imagine it being any worse. So as much as we love to root against someone and, and wanting to see someone lose, I feel like the story of redemption and coming back is much greater than that. I feel like I love that story more. So if she can come back from this and become a better person, learn from it and not be how she was, if she can get the belt back, I think that would be a great story and I would be okay with them promoting that. But the whole invincible once in a lifetime, you know, you almost kind of have to be like, you almost have to be like a pessimist in the sense of saying, like, when you go to fight, you gotta know, if I move left, I should have moved right, I could be waking up, you know, anyone can be knocked out, anyone can lose, there's always someone better. So that's why it's so important to respect your opponent. So, you know, when you do lose, you don't look like an ass. Trying to think of anything else to say. Okay, so what happens now? You know, people are talking about rematch, rematch, and I'm like, no. If they had a rematch like they want to do as soon as possible, I don't think it would be any different. Holly is really prepared for that kind of style. I think Ronda would have to change huge game plans. She would have to get rid of a lot of tendencies that she has. And, um, you know, some people say change camps. And you know what? I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. I would say this. If she's going to change camps and work on her striking, first of all, I think she, which her bread and butter is the ground. So, like, when GSP lost to Matt Sarah, he came back and he just focused on what he was good at, which was grappling. I think, but then he also gained some new facets like the jab that he gained. But what I would say is, if she's gonna go learn striking, I'm not saying go to some some crazy place, but you know she trains. She has trained in the past with the Diaz brothers. I know probably it was grappling, not boxing. But here you have two people, or several people within that camp. You know them. You're friends with them. They care about you. They're really good at striking and boxing. Those would be the people you go to for help. And there's nothing wrong with going to people and getting help and getting better. So I would suggest that, and I'm not for instant rematches. It, you know, it's not like, uh, what was it? They did, the, did that with BJ and Frankie. It was close, but um, the second fight was kind of more the same. Um, in this fight, I, this fight was not close. It was very one-sided. Like, she had nothing for Holly, and Holly had an answer for everything Wanda had. So, yeah, and, and like them giving Kane an instant rematch with Verdum, I'm not for that either. I think when they gave 
once we found out in King Santos 2 that Kane actually did caught, get caught and he was the better fighter. I thought that the third fight was too soon. I know the division was low and there wasn't that many people. I thought the third fight was too soon. Santos only had one fight in between. He was with Mark Hunt. Mark Hunt is a striker. He's kind of fat. So he doesn't fight at a crazy pace. They kind of just went into Santos' game. It, it wasn't a fight to preparing for Kane's wrestling and pressure. So why would the fight be any different? And then the third fight happened and it was like watching the second fight all over. So for me, if a fight's very defended and one-sided, you need to take some time away so uh, the fighter can develop the skills to have an answer. It's like uh, TJ against Burrell. The second fight was the same as the first, and the first wasn't close. So, yeah, I, I'm not for a rematch. I know they might think to do a rematch for money, but really in the long term, if they do a rematch and she lose, she might not ever fight again. So, is it really worth that? Whereas, you know, you could give her some fights, build her back up, and then sell the fight. Even though the UFC loves giving these instant rematches to the champions, if you actually look at the history of the rematches, a lot of those fights, if they weren't close, they end up being the exact same. Or even if they are close, the fight ends up being about the same. In order for you to have a different result of the fight, I think a longer time span needs to happen in order for each fighter to gain new skill sets and have answers that they didn't have in the previous fight. If you want to be great or good, you have to just focus on that one thing and do it all the time. Um, the moment you don't, you know, it could be the moment that the, the other person's working while you're not. So. It's, it's just the whole thing's weird to me. I think because no one exposed those holes, she had no reason to change or get better at it. But, you know, if anything, the fight, if she can learn from it, she can become better from it and fix those gaps. Will she do that? Will she ever fight again? I don't know. But, you know, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.